Welcome to Surgeon Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, again presenting in collaboration with the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint director of the Dissociation and presenter. Uh, today's topic gynecology pathology. We'll be talking about a 22 year old woman who was found to have a pelvic mass on gynecologic exam. She presented with some symptoms of uh, pain and fullness. Rough on the radiographic examination, we see that she has large uh, abdominal mass. Uh, it's heterogeneous. It's got some solid areas, some cystic uh, areas, low, very low attenuation areas, uh, probably some areas of calcification and coarse uh, patterns here, uh, and several areas in the tumor. Uh, on resect tumor, had a fleshy uh, variable uh, cut. You see here some very, very soft uh, glistening tissue. Uh, some more firm uh, cystic areas, uh, yellowish areas, uh, and even some discolored black and brown areas. So this certainly uh, suggests a, uh, 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 an epithelial-derived or a mixed uh, tumor tissue type of uh, neoplasm. A microscopic section for today. Uh, representative of this term, and we can see a low power that we've got some cellular areas down here, some cystic areas, a few more cellular areas up here and over here, perhaps, um, and then a mixture of cystic uh, and variable epithelial, and maybe even a little fatty uh, uh, throughout the tumor. So here we see just at uh, initial low power an area of squamous differentiation. Um, looks to be maturing, maybe a hair follicle like structure there. Uh, here we have some smooth muscle uh, and some columnar epithelium with apparent uh, production, uh, reminiscent of other structures. Again, squamous epithelium, haphazard keratinization here, and uh, other uh, elements, cystic changes, uh, almost transitional appearing there. Uh, going up here, we see that we have uh, a little bit more uh, immature-looking tissue, uh, more cellular, uh, maybe a neuroglial in uh, relationship. It has a very fair background, and they look like uh, somewhat immature cells. They don't look like mature uh, neuroglial elements. Not a lot of mitotic activity, but there is some dyskeratosis uh, in or dyshumidis. Uh, access uh, in this area as well. Uh, looking a little bit further afield up into this area here, we can see uh, perhaps some more immature tissue, um, a more neuroglial appearance here, and then this more cellular area that is either lymphocytes or a, a neuroblastic type of tiff tissue that we see here. So at uh, Low magnification, we see several areas here, here, and then, uh, of course, down here of immature neuroglial type tissue. Uh, we can look uh, a little bit more closely at some of these areas, and I think we'll see that there are uh, uh, increased mitotic figures. Here you see here, um, others here, uh, maybe another one over here. That this is proliferating tissue. We see maybe some rosette as a characteristic of uh, immature neural, uh, neural tube uh, on laga. Uh, and so this classifies as immature uh, glial tissue with a high mitotic rate, and it's present in uh, numerous foci, uh, and, uh, and that would be uh, constituting a high uh, immature teratoma. Now, patients, the teratoma of the ovary uh, is based primarily on this feature, the amount of neuroglial 
present. While immature teratoma is a malignancy, much less common than the uh, teratomas. Uh, rarely present bilaterally. Now, the grade, uh, of course, is based, as I've indicated, on the amount of neural tissue. Uh, the grade one tumors have uh, virtual neuroglia uh, immature tissue. Uh, just carcinogen and other zenchymal elements would be identified. Uh, grade two tumors uh, would have uh, rare foci tumor. And the grade three tumors, numerous foci of immature glial tissue. And that's defined as greater than four low power fields per slot. Uh, certainly, index has uh, that feature. Now, let's take a look at some similar uh, to see if we can use that uh, basis to correctly classify them. Here we see fragments of uh, cystic and solid tissue, variable types of. Uh, epithelium, um, and probably here we can uh, see some defining uh, cartilage tissue that is uh, not fully mature, uh, so we can move it into the immature category. Uh, however, looking around, we don't see uh, too much uh, other neuroglial elements. Let's just see and browse through what we've got here. Cartilage, cartilage, epithelium, uh, immature mesenchyme. Uh, looking a little further abroad here, again, the mesenchymal tissue surrounding this uh, intestinal enteric type epithelium or squamous epithelium appears to be fairly uh, differentiated. It doesn't uh, appear to be neuroglial. Maybe down here we have an area of uh, glial type tissue. Uh, it certainly does have this sort of a fibrillar background that we would associate with glial type differentiation. But we don't see any blastema. We don't see the uh, highly cellular rosette formation. We don't see those that we would associate with immature neuroglial tissue. Little bone formation there as well. You can take a look at another case. Um, just to classify that previous one, we're probably classified as an immature uh, So let's see how this one uh, pans out. Uh, again, we see heterogeneous type of uh, tissue, um, cystic changes. And here we see some uh, glial type tissue. It has that. Uh, fibular uh, character. We can see here finely vascular. Uh, here's some other stromal tissue elements there. Uh, we've got some fat mixed in here as well. Uh, some epithelial structures there. Again, sort of uh, mixed uh, immature tissue and tissue with epithelial elements here almost a type of epithelial and stratified uh, columnar. Looking a little bit further and broader, um, here we have a little bit of suggestion that maybe we have some immature neural elements here. And I th think uh, based on that finding, uh, this case will probably fit into the grade uh, two uh, category with rare neural glial elements as we've identified there. Um, we might find some more over here, perhaps in here. And sure enough, here's another little tubular structure, a few more. So maybe two low power fields with uh, Neuroglial immature elements, uh, classifying then as a grade two. To continue the practice, let's look at this slide. Here again, we see some immature, poorly formed cartilage tissue, variable cystic and solid spaced areas. Now of note here, we also see uh, a nicely pigmented epithelium that's probably trying to capitulate the choroid uh, uh, from, from the uh, eye. 
Uh, here's some glial type tissue, but it looks fairly mature, not very cellular. Again, more glial tissue here, intermixed amongst the glial structures here. Look here, a little bit, maybe a little bit less. They're not clear if that's glial or other mesenchyme. More glial tissue here. Let's go up in here and see if this is any element of neuroglial tissue. And yes, this looks like a uh, germinal layer, uh, maybe almost a retina type structure. Um, is does look organized, however. It's not forming rosettes. Um, and uh, looking a little closely here, I don't see uh, mitotic figures. So I think this area could still be as uh, mature uh, glial tissue, even though it's organized a retina type of structure. Uh, it's not uh, forming rosette. There's a rosette right there. Uh, so we've got a rosette here. So again, this would climb into a uh, grade two tumor. So a very interesting case uh, with uh, retinal uh, choroidal type tissues, mostly uh, immature cartilage and mesenchyme, uh, mature glial tissue with a rare focus of uh, immature glial tissue. So our reference diagnosis today is an immature teratoma. Um, and it would call Norris grade three on the base uh, multiple low power fields with uh, immature glial tissue. And uh, that would buy a somber uh, prognosis for this patient. That concludes our today. And uh, I hope there'll be some flowers in your future. For, uh, uh, remember to uh, continuing uh, posting of the, on YouTube. And, and if you have comments, we uh, welcome. Uh, if you want to reach out directly, uh, here's my, my Twitter handle. Uh, I'm available to uh, take questions and interact in that format as well. Thanks very much. And we'll hope to see you again next time.